All right. So today uh, we're going to start one uh, new topic, wrapper classes. Okay. So let us understand uh, what is wrapper class and uh, how we can use this wrapper class and where we have to use this uh, wrapper class. So normally in Java, we can store data in two different formats. So one is the primitive format, the other one is object format. Okay, so suppose if you take a string, right? So if you want to just create a string variable, we will say string s equal to, uh, we can directly put the value like this. Or we can also uh, create a string like an object. Like I can say string s equal to new string of, we can say welcome. So this is another way of creating. So here it is just like a uh, variable, but here it is just like an object because as soon as we use new keyword, it will internally create an object. So similarly, do we have anything for primitive types? For example, uh, if I create an integer variable, suppose int x equal to 100. And similarly, for this particular integer, do we have any wrapper class? That means, can we create this variable as an object? Okay, for example, let's say if you want to create int x equal to new int, is it possible to put like this? That means here what exactly we are doing is we are converting, uh, this is a normal primitive type, but this is an object. But when you want to create an object, normal primitive type we cannot use. Primitive type we cannot use. So instead, we have to use something called wrapper class means for every primitive type there is a, a wrapper class is available for example for int we have an integer wrapper class so that we have to use here also we have to use something called uh, integer this is the wrapper class okay this is a wrapper class similarly for every primitive type there is a, a wrapper class is available like for int there is an integer wrapper class for float, we have a float wrapper class. For double data type, we have a double wrapper class. So for every primitive type, there is a wrapper class is available. So if I look at here, these are the wrapper classes. For every primitive data type, there is a wrapper class is available. So what is an advantage of wrapper classes? There are two advantages. One is we can create a, a variable with object format. Okay, and the other thing is we can convert the data into one format to another format. Okay, that if you want to convert the data into one format, another format, we can also use wrapper classes. And if you want to create a data in object format also, we can use uh, these uh, wrapper classes. The wrapper is nothing but it's just a name. The Java people have given to that because these are the special classes. We cannot compare with other built-in classes in Java. For every data type in primitive data type, there is a corresponding class is available. So only specifically those classes are called wrapper classes. Okay, string is not a wrapper class. String is a normal class. Okay, but especially whichever primitive data type is there for that, whichever class is available, associated class is available, only those classes are called wrapper classes. Okay, so string is not a wrapper class. Because we don't have a string primitive type. We don't have a string primitive type. So we don't have a lowercase string type, right? So string is a separate class. But we have an integer primitive type is there. We have a float primitive type. We have a double. It is also primitive type. Care, boolean. These are all primitive types. So especially for every primitive type, there is a corresponding class is available in Java. Only those classes we can call them as a wrapper classes. So what is the use of these wrapper classes mainly is data conversion. If you want to convert the data into one format to another format, we can use these wrapper classes. And every wrapper class is having some built-in methods also. Whenever I say class, the class contains what? The class contains the variables and methods. So whenever I say it is a built-in class, obviously, which contains the built-in methods, means which are already created by Java, and we have to know exactly how to use them. So wrapper classes are the classes, built-in classes, which are available in Java. And uh, for every primitive type, there is a corresponding wrapper classes available in Java. Only for primitive types. Okay, but there are other uh, predefined classes also there in Java, like a string class is available. Okay, array list class is available. 
okay hash set class is available these are all predefined classes but there are not uh, wrapper classes these are all predefined classes yeah. but they are not wrapper classes because these classes are not representing any primitive types so only these are the wrapper classes which are available suppose if you have a short also short is a one numeric data type for this also we have a short wrapper class for every primitive type there is a corresponding wrapper class is available in java that is the first thing now what is the use of wrapper class and where exactly we use this wrapper classes so the wrapper classes contains the built-in methods as i said those built-in methods we have to use to convert the data one format to another format but why again we need to convert the data into one format or another format so let me give you uh, some request scenarios for example, I have a, a prices. Let's say there are two items and every item is having some price, but that is in string format. Let's say string price one equal to, it is in string format, let's say 150.50, something like this. And I have another string, string price two equal to 12050. So let's say this is another string. Right, so now I have a two strings, price one and a price two. Now, if you want to add these two prices, I want to find total price. So, how can we find total price? So, currently they are in string format, right? If I do price one plus price two, then what will happen? It will basically do concatenation because even though they are the numbers, currently they are in the string format. So if you add price one plus price two, it will just concatenate, but it will not perform the addition of these two numbers because they are in the currently in the string format. So what we need to do now, we have to convert them into numeric format. We have to convert them into numeric format. And after conversion, we can add those two numbers. So how can we convert into numeric format? Again, we have to use some method from the built-in classes, wrapper classes. So by using the wrapper class methods, we can convert data from one format to another format. So another example will tell you. Suppose uh, if you take any web application, for example, just a second. Uh, guys, can you see my screen? Okay. Just okay, so if I just look at this, normally in any application, uh, you can see, let's say, some registration form. So here you have to enter the name and here you have to enter the email address and here you have to enter the phone number okay so let's say this is the form so normally uh, these are input boxes or we can also call them as a text boxes so text boxes allow data only in the text format text in the sense what a string format okay only in the string format data is allowed in these fields so suppose in our automation in our automation, suppose I want to pass this phone number. So normally, phone number, what is the type of the phone number? Integer, numeric type, right? Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something like this. So this is purely numeric format. But uh, if the data is in numeric format, we cannot directly pass it into the text field. Okay, in automation, I'm saying, saying. So whatever data which we have, currently it is in integer format or numeric format. So if the data is there in the numeric format, the text field or the text box is not allowed the numeric format directly. So the text boxes or input fields are allowed data only in the string format. So what we need to do now, we need to convert this into string format. And after that, we have to pass it into the field. So here we need to convert the data into numeric format to string format. And here we have to convert this data into the string format to numeric format. And then we can perform the addition of two numbers. So like this, there are n number of requirements. And uh, we have to convert the data into one format to another format whenever it is needed. 
So for that, we have to use these wrapper classes. And these wrapper classes are having some built-in methods. So by using those built-in methods, we can convert the data into one format to another format. Okay. Now let me show you some examples. Let me clear this. So wrapper classes. So first let us see the first scenario. Scenario one. Suppose I have data uh, in string format. I have data in the string format. And uh, I want to convert the string format data into int format or decimal format or boolean format or character format. We, these are the main boolean types which we have, right? So string to int, string to double, string to boolean, string to character, I want to convert through wrapper classes. So how we can do it? This is one scenario. Second thing is, suppose I have data in reverse way. For example, I have data in integer format or double format or boolean format or character format. All these formats I want to convert into string format. This is another combination. So string to other primitive types and all other primitive types to string type. But within this primitive type, it's not possible. Okay, double to boolean, billion to int integer character, not possible. These are all one single uh, category, we can say. They are primitive types. So all string to primitive types, primitive types to string type. Okay, let's see how can we convert this. So to convert this, we have first we will see first combination. So we'll take one string variable which contains some value and then we will convert them into different types. For example, let me take the first scenario. If I have a string data type, I want to convert this into int format, integer format. Then what is a target type here? Target, integer type is a target. So we have to use integer wrapper class. Integer dot inside this class, there is a static method available, which is parse int, parse int of. Here we have to pass whichever string you want to convert to the string, we have to pass here. String value we have to pass. So what this method will do is, this particular method will convert the string value into integer format. So this parse int method will return integer value. So here we have to use integer wrapper class. Inside this parse int is a static method, which we are calling directly from integer class and we have to pass the string value. So this method will convert string to integer format. Similarly, suppose I have a string, want to convert into decimal format. Let us say double format I want to convert. So then what is the target type here? Target is double. So we have to use double wrapper class. Double dot. The method is parse double. And here again we have to pass string value. So this particular method will convert the string value into decimal format. So this parse double method will return decimal number. And uh, suppose I have a string that I want to convert into Boolean type. Boolean, string to Boolean type. So then we have Boolean wrapper class. Target is Boolean. So Boolean dot parse Boolean. And here we have to pass string value. Okay. And the fourth, suppose I have a string and want to convert into character. String to character. This is not possible. Can anyone know why it is not possible? String to character. String to character. Why it is not possible? String to character. String is what? Collection of characters. But character is what? Single character. Right? How can we convert multiple characters into single character? Not possible. Right? So for character, it is not possible. String to integer, string to double, string to boolean. Okay, string to long, string to short, string to float. All primitive types are supported except this char. 
okay so now we'll see practically how can we convert this let's go to eclipse and create new package and package name is day 17 okay now inside this i'm creating a new class i'll name it as data conversion methods take this main class i'm directly taking main class and i can directly write the code inside the main method okay so first of all let us see the first scenario how to convert string to integer string to double string to bool and string to character okay first thing string to integer so i'll take one string variable s equal to okay so here there is a prerequisite suppose if string s equal to welcome can we convert this into number can we convert this into number string s equal to welcome string value is a welcome can we convert this into numeric type no this is not possible so even if you try to convert for example i'm taking integer wrapper class integer dot percent of string i'm passing so this will convert and after conversion it should return integer right so i'm taking one more integer variable let's say yes int so this is s is a string variable s is a string variable and integer that parse int of yes what i'm doing exactly here i'm trying to convert a string to integer format okay so when you try to run this code this will throw some exception number format exception it will throw why it is throwing number format exception because we cannot convert this characters into alphabets into number so that is the reason okay so that is the reason we cannot convert into number because we have a characters in this okay so what is the prerequisite now we should have a numeric value inside the double quotation then only it is possible okay so with this we cannot convert cannot convert to int okay but when we can convert it should have some numeric value let's say one two three four five so this we can convert string s equal to in the double quotation so even though they are numbers it is currently is in the string format so we can convert so after that we can print this value you can just print yes int okay so or else uh, let me tell you something so let me take uh, like this let's say string uh, s1 equal to 10.5 or 10 is equal to 10 so sorry yeah 10 so this is the string format value is 10 which is number but which is in the string format and now i'm taking another string string s2 equal to 20 this is also in string format so if you want to add these two numbers we can say s1 plus s2 so it will perform the concatenation but it will not perform the addition of these two numbers this is a concatenation so if you want to add them first we need to convert them into numeric format and then we can add so how can we convert this s1 into numeric format wrapper class integer dot parse int of s1 like this we have to pass so now what will happen this method will convert s1 into integer format same we can do for s2 also integer that parse int okay parse int of s2 like this okay so if the data is in string format like this then we can convert them into numeric format and then we can perform the addition of those two numbers okay now you can see you got a 30 so whenever you have data in the string format like this if you want to perform any operations it is not possible so you can convert them into integer format so what is the method we can use integer dot parse int so string to int integer wrapper class dot parse int of string value whichever value you want to convert you can pass that value here so that will convert this into string form in integer format and again this will also convert into integer format and after that it will perform the 
adds down to numbers. We can take direct integer. Yes, you can take direct integer. You no need to convert in that case. But what is the case here? If you have data in the string format, right, then you can convert it to number format. If you take the data in the number format directly, you don't need these wrapper classes and all. If you take the data in the number format directly, integer format, you no need to use any variable classes. You can directly perform addition of two numbers. Here, the scenario is different. If the data is in string format, then how can we perform? Because in the real scenario, it will be very, very useful. When you do automation testing, it will be very, very useful. So in automation testing, uh, I will show you how it will be. For example, let us say in your web application, you have some items, products, and their prices. Let's say you have a product one and a product two, product three, and their prices are there like this. So prices are there. So what is your requirement is you want to read all these prices and find a total price. This is your requirement as part of your automation. You want to capture all these prices and you want to perform the total price and you need to compare this price with your expected price. What is the total price? So then what you will do, you will write the automation code for reading this data. And while reading the data, even though they are the numeric, at the time of reading, you will get the data in the string format. So whatever data you are reading from the web application, everything will be in the string format. Okay. So once this data is in string format, you can't perform the total, right? So you have to convert that into number format, numeric format. And then only you will perform the total. Okay. So these type of scenarios you can see in the automation. So for that reason, we have to know how to convert the data into one format to another format, which is most important. But if you're directly writing a program, there is no dependency. You can directly specify these two variables as integer format and you can directly perform addition of two numbers. That's not the scenario here. The scenario is if the data is in string format, how can we convert into number format? But why we need to convert into number format? Because we can't perform arithmetic operations on the string format of data. Okay, that's the reason. So we have successfully converted the data from string to integer format. Similarly, we can also convert the data into integer from integer to decimal format. So let me show you this. Just a second. Okay, let's comment this. Okay, so I'm just commenting this. Just observe. Now the second scenario. I want to convert the string to double. Guys, you are understood why I'm doing like this? Why we need to convert the data from one format to another format? You understood the scenario, right? Yes, string to double. Suppose you have a data in the string format. Now I want to convert into decimal format. Again, take the two variables. So string S1 is equal to this time I have data in the decimal format like this. String S2 equal to. Okay, now I have data in the decimal format. Now I have data in the decimal format. So if you have data in the decimal format, I cannot, uh, I can perform uh, additional numbers, but currently it is in string format. Numbers are decimal, but they are in uh, string format. So now we need to convert them into decimal and then we can add those two numbers. So how can we convert them into decimal? So if you want to convert S1 into decimal, you can say what is a wrapper class which we have to use? Double is a wrapper class. Double dot parse double of the string variable. So this will convert. And similarly, I will convert S2 also. And say double dot parse double of S2. Okay, so this is a value. Now I'm trying to print this value. So now this will convert the numbers, decimal numbers into, sorry, it will convert string type into decimal numbers and then it will perform addition of two numbers. So this is a one method which we have. To convert a string to double, we have to use double dot parse double. 
Now, suppose I have a string, I want to convert that into Boolean variable. So what is Boolean? Boolean means what? What are the values that are accepted in Boolean? Only two, true or false, right? So if I take a string like this, string s equal to welcome, can we convert this into Boolean? Can we convert this into Boolean? We cannot because they are the characters, right? If we cannot convert this into Boolean. Suppose here we have a true, this we can convert into Boolean or we can have a false here, false. Then we can convert into Boolean. Only if you have a true or false, then we can convert that uh, from string format to Boolean format, okay? So how can we convert this? What is the target type is Boolean. So what is the method? Boolean wrapper class, Boolean dot pass Boolean. Then we have to pass yes. So now let us print this. So this will convert the string to Boolean format. So Boolean dot pass Boolean of string. So this will convert a string to Boolean. Suppose if we put something else, welcome. Now run this. It is still saying false. Just a second. So by default, it is saying false. Okay, by default, other than true, if you pass anything here, other than true, if you pass anything here, that will return false. Okay, there's a default behavior of this parse boolean method. So other than true, if you pass anything, that will return false. Okay, for example, let's pass true here. So it is returning true. Okay, let's pass something else. It is returning false. Okay, so other than other than true, if you pass any string, that will return false. Okay, so this is a behavior. Everything is considered as a false. Other than true, if you pass anything here, that will return false. So here it will accept only true or false. Then only we can convert from string to Boolean format. String to Boolean format. Okay. So this will not affect any programming logic. So once you are writing the logic, you have to carefully use proper data type, proper data. So that you have to plan before writing the logic. Okay, got my point guys. So string, if you have data in the string format, you can convert that into Boolean format. Okay, now, so we have seen these four types and string to character is not possible. Okay, string to character is not possible. Why? Because string contains a multiple characters because character contains only single character. So multiple things we cannot convert into one single. So this string to character not possible. Okay, remember this. So this is one scenario which we have seen. How to convert the string type to other primitive types. Int double boolean and char is not possible. I'm just removing the char from here. Okay. Now we'll see the opposite way. Suppose I have data in integer double boolean and character format. Then how can we convert into string? Okay, from primitive type to string type, how can we convert? This is also most important scenario. Let us see that. So this is for string to Boolean. Okay, so now we'll see the opposite way. Suppose you have a primitive types. I want to convert that into string type, primitive type to string to type. Suppose I have int or I have a double, I have so boolean and I have caret. So from these types to finally the target type is what? String. But string is not a wrapper class. String is a not a wrapper class. But what is the target type here? String. So the method also should be present in the string class itself. So how to convert this? built-in types into string format okay so we will see that suppose i'm taking uh, one integer variable int a equal to 10 
and also I'm taking a decimal number double suppose d equal to 10.5 this is a decimal number and I'm taking one character c equal to a and also I'm taking one boolean variable boolean bool equal to true so now I have taken four different primitive data types into double caret boolean. Now I want to convert them into string format. So here there is only one method is available through which we can convert any data type from any data type to string. Only one method for all kinds of data. We have only one single method which is available through which we can convert any data type from any data type to string type that is value of okay value of method is available so scenario two yes okay any data type to string so convert any data type of string this is the method string dot value of here we can pass if you pass integer value in this, it will convert into string. If you pass character, boolean, whatever you want, you can pass it here. That will convert it into string format. So this method will convert all primitive data types into string format. Okay. Now we'll see that. How can we convert uh, everything into string format? Okay, first we will convert uh, integer. So how can we do it? Simple, we can say string dot value of. This is the method. You can see there are how many formats are there? Boolean character, character array, double, float, int, long, everything. This what type of feature it is? One method, many forms. What type of uh, concept it is in object-oriented programming? So as soon as you am, I'm searching for value of, it is giving multiple definitions. So what type of feature it is? It is overloading, which is related to polymorphism. Immediately you need to notice this, okay? Whenever you see multiple methods, as soon as you say dot in auto search, that method is overloaded. Overloaded means what? Different parameters, different data types. Again, rules are applicable. So here we are converting uh, integer to string type, right? So we have to take this particular method value of and here we can pass integer variable. So this will convert integer into a string format. So now we can just print this so string dot value of a like this. Okay. Or else if you don't want to print directly, you can store that in a string variable. You can take one string variable here. String s equal to string dot value of a. So now this A is converting to string format. So after that, we can just print yes value like this. So now yes is a string variable. So the value is there in the string format. 10 is in string format. Okay. So similarly, you can convert all other types to uh, string format. So for example, let's say string dot value of and uh, d d is a basically double so that also i can store in a string yes he already created variable here so i'm trying to reuse this variable here so whichever value we have already stored in variable s the new value will be replaced here now again i can just print yes value so this will print decimal number in string format right so same thing we can repeat for other types so here this is an integer decimal and character and guys tell me can we convert character into string so this combination is possible or not so previously uh, we are not able to convert uh, string into character right String to character not possible earlier. String to character not possible, right? Because what string contains multiple characters, char contains only single character. It's not possible. But this time I'm trying to convert character into string format. Is it possible or not? Character into string format. 
Yes, possible. Why? Because string is what? It can have single character also, multiple characters also. Right? Character is a single. That will convert it into string. So we will get a A. One single character in string format. String contains a single character also, right? So for example, uh, if I look at this, this is also string. If I put anything in the double quotation, that is a string. Right? This is possible. So string to character is also possible. So when you run this, it is converted character to string and we got the value. Similarly, Boolean is also possible. So we can convert a Boolean data into string format. Suppose here, bool variable I have taken. So I'm just passing here. Bool. So this is converted in string format. Again, I'm printing the same value after converting into string. So we got a string value. Okay. So this is how we can convert the data into one format to another format. So within primitive types, it is not possible. Okay, integer to float, flow to integer, uh, character to integer, integer character, not possible. But we can convert string to any other types and any other types to string. Means all primitive types to string and string to all primitive types is not possible. It is possible. So very, very important scenarios because in automation, we will very, very frequently we use uh, these data conversion methods. Very frequently we use because whenever you work with the web applications, when you read the data from application on the UI, everything will be in the string format. So once you read the data in the string format, we can perform certain operations on the data. So in that case, we have to convert into primitive types. Similarly, whenever you want to test any application, we have to pass the data into the particular fields like phone number, first name, last name, email address, and so on. So whenever you pass some data into the uh, web application, we have to pass everything into the string format, everything into the text format. So in that case also, we have to convert the data from primitive types to string type of data. So this is a most important. So this is all about wrapper class. What is the use of wrapper classes? For every primitive type, there is a corresponding wrapper class is available. And uh, in the wrapper classes, by using built-in methods, we can convert the data from one format to another format okay which is very very important and not only this the wrapper classes we will use along with the collections also along with array list along with hash set hash map along with collections we use this wrapper classes we cannot use primitive data types in array list or collection any other collections only wrapper classes we will use in array list for example i'll tell you Suppose what is an array list? Array list is a just like an array. Okay. So how can create an array list? You can say array list a r r equal to new array list. So when you create an array list object like this, what will happen is in this we can store multiple values. Okay. In the a r r is a array list type of variable. So in this we can store multiple values just like an array itself. Just like an array, it will give you. Uh, we can store n number of values. We are not specifying any number of locations because this is more dynamic. What is the difference between normal array and array list is array is a static. We have to specify the size. But here we no need to specify the size. So we can keep adding more number of values in this array list. As soon as you adding more number of values, it will keep increasing this array. Okay. Suppose if you create an array list variable like this, this will accept heterogeneous data means what here I can store 100 here I can store string here you can say character here you can say boolean so heterogeneous data is allowed by default but I want to restrict this with only homogeneous data I want to store only integers I want to store only string I want to store only uh, decimal numbers then how can we do it you can do like this so you can say array list Okay, so you can write like this, array list and ARR equal to new array list, right? This is a normal definition. It will allow all kinds of data. But if you want to restrict to specific type, here we have to specify the type. So here in the Angular bracket, we have to specify wrapper class. Suppose if you want to store only integers, I can specify the wrapper class here and also 
here here both the places in angular bracket we have to specify so here we cannot use normal data type primitive data types not allowed so suppose if you want to create this uh, with a normal type let's say normal primitive type int here so this is not valid this is not valid okay this is not valid this is valid so when you work with the collections also we have to use only wrapper classes for representing the data we cannot use primitive types in collections this is simple one example i have given so in the next classes we will discuss in detail about collections concept so just i have given one example so the wrapper classes will be used in two different ways one is for converting the data into one format or another format the second one is in collections in the collections also we will use the wrapper classes okay so remember uh, this much for now and uh, we will move on to the next concept so is it clear everyone so far wrapper classes data conversion methods which is most important especially in automation many places we use this uh, data conversion methods from wrapper class okay so now we'll discuss one small concept uh, the packages and access modifiers these are all miscellaneous concepts okay we have already completed programming fundamentals and object oriented programming concepts and these are all some more additional uh, miscellaneous concepts which we are going to discuss so the packages and access modifiers so we are using these uh, almost every day but we don't know exactly what is package what is access modifier and uh, how many access modifiers are there which access modifier we have to use where we have to use so we will discuss in detail packages and access modifiers so what is package in java so package is just like a folder package is just like a folder if i go back to your uh, project the project contains the packages so normally what is a hierarchy okay so in java normally what is a hierarchy is first we will create a project so project is a high level entity so this is the project this is a project which we have created in eclipse so the project contains the different packages these are all packages so i say pack 1 pack 2 okay pack 3 and so on we can create n number of packages and every package contains a multiple classes class 1 class 2 class 3 and so on every package contains a multiple classes so this is the hierarchy of java project project contains a package package contains a classes so here package is just like a folder and all classes are different files okay how it will store in the workspace just like a folders and files format it will store Okay, if I look at here, uh, let me clear this. Okay, so if I go back to the project and get the location of your project in the workspace. So currently everything is storing, uh, storing into the workspace. So let me just open my workspace. Okay, so if I go back to the workspace, this is your workspace now just observe how this folder structure is got saved so here src is the root package now we go to src directly now you can see how many packages which we have created all the packages are stored in the form of folders just like a folders okay and if you open any one of the package let's say day 17 there is one java file which we created if i open this you can see the java file which is got created so if you do any change here, this will automatically reflect here. And again, if you do change any change in this Eclipse, that will automatically reflect here. So package is just like a folder and that will store like a folder in operating system. Okay. So why we need packages? Because we need to organize files properly. So for organizing, suppose in your system, you don't put all the files in one single place, right? You will separate the files, audio files are different folder, personal files are different folder, or video files are different folder. You can keep multiple folders. Why will creating folders in your system? Because maintain. So tomorrow, if you want to search for some particular file, 
you can easily uh, go and go to the particular folder and you can easily get it so instead of keeping everything in one place and if you split them into multiple folders it is easy to recognize the files and it is easy to maintain also so that is the reason we have to use packages okay so in java there are two kinds of a packages actually so one is built-in package and a user defined package so built-in package and the other one is uh, user defined package so user defined package means we created our own packages so these are all packages which we created we have created all these packages okay these are all user defined packages but there is another type of packages called built-in packages built-in packages is nothing but the packages which are already there in java already java is already created those packages and whenever there are built-in packages definitely there are some built-in classes and whenever i say built-in class which, which is also having built-in methods so built-in package user defined package but what is an example of built-in package in the last classes uh, we have user somewhere suppose especially in i think in arrays concept okay so where exactly we use uh, the built-in package so sometimes uh, if i go back okay so in arrays concept i think uh, when you print an array we use something called util package okay array is a dot util or something i think it is seven somewhere yeah you can just look at this here we are accessing the predefined class arrays class and this is a predefined method so whenever you are representing some built-in class we have to import that particular package so this arrays class is present inside the java.util package okay java.util package so whenever you are trying to use some built-in classes in your program you have to import corresponding package yeah scanner is also a built-in class scanner is built-in class and where it is available scanner class is available in which package again it is part of util package okay so like this suppose sometimes if i use existing classes which are already there in java we have to import corresponding package then only we can access those classes otherwise we cannot access and this is applicable for user defined packages also if you have a two packages in one package Okay, suppose uh, if you have, uh, let's say, if you create two different packages, suppose you have a pack one and here I have a pack two and here I have a class one and here I have a class two. Now I want to refer this class here in another package. So if you want to refer this C1 here, how can we do it? This class we have to import in this C2. So pack one, pack one dot C1 import pack one dot c1 we have to use this import statement so that means whenever you want to use any external class or whenever you want to use any built-in class in your current program you have to import that package in which that class is exist okay so that is a concept here Okay, guys, understood what is a built-in package and what is a user-defined package. So, built-in packages are nothing but what? Those packages which are already there in Java. And if you want to use them, you have to import it. And user-defined packages means we can create our own packages. These are all our user-defined packages. So, in the coming sessions, you will see so many built-in packages like this. N number of built-in packages. Once you start automation, you can see N number of built-in packages. We can just import and use those classes and packages. Okay. So package is nothing but what? It is just like a folder. And we have two kinds of packages, built-in package and user different package. And built-in packages, whenever you want to use, you have to import that package. Then only you can access all the classes. Same thing is applicable for user different package. And uh, we can also create a, a folder within another folder, right? Similarly, we can also create a package within another package that is called sub package we can also create one package in another package which is called sub package for example let me show you here currently we are in day 70 so this is a main package so how it is got stored in the memory let me go back and open this folder so this is a folder 
So day 17 is got created as just like a folder. Now, which contains one file. Now, inside the day 17, I want to create another package. Sub package I want to create. So how can we create sub package? You can just right click here. New. Select package. So on whichever package you want to create another package, you can select that package. New package and here it will show you the current package. So now we want to create a sub package, right? You should not remove this. You have to continue dot dot is representing sub package dot. Then you can give any name. Let's say I'm giving pack one. When I click on finish. So in Eclipse, you can see the different entry here. Just like other packages, this will also show you another entry. But if you go and see the folder, day 17 inside the pack one is what created. In Eclipse, the view is different. In Eclipse, just like other packages, this sub package is also shown as a, just like another entry. It is not part of day 17. You can see here. But if you see the folder structure, it is created a new pack one. Okay. So this is how we can also create sub packages. So currently day 17 is having one file and one sub package. Very simple concept. Okay, now we will discuss about access modifiers. So access modifier. So in development point of view, which is most important access modifier, but automation point of view, it's not that much important, but interview prospect, you have to know all the access modifiers because everything we will make it as a public in automation. We don't maintain any privacy or security or anything for variables or methods. So everything we can make it as a public, but in development point of view, they have to make something more secure and privacy. So they will use some access kind of modifiers. So there are four types of access modifiers are available in Java. Listen this carefully. Very important. Access modifiers. Four access modifiers. There are four access modifiers. First one, public. Public. And the second, protected. Third, default. Fourth. Fourth, private. So private is a very lowest level of access modifier default is little higher than private the protected is more higher than default public is more higher than protected so basically what is access modifier access modifiers defines the scope of a variable and methods so access modifiers defines defines scope of variables and methods that means what where exactly we can access. Suppose if I create a variable, where I can access within the class, within the package, within the project, different locations. That is decided by access modifier. Similarly, when I create a method, where I want to access that method, within the class or within the package or outside of the package, that means within the project, where I want to access, that is decided by the access modifier. Okay, so access modifiers defines the scope of variables and methods so in java so we already seen the hierarchy how this hierarchy will be maintained in java is the high level entity is a project let's say this is a java project this is a java project inside the project we have a packages there are n number of packages which we created let's say this is p1 this is p2 this is p3 in every package, we have multiple classes. Again, there are C1, C2, and so on. C3, C4, and so on. C5, C6, and so on. So every package contains the classes. Now, just observe very carefully. We will go from the bottom. Private. So when I create a variable as a private, okay, suppose in the class, when I create a variable as a private or method as a private, those methods and variables we can access only within the class, only within the class. We cannot access anywhere else. Totally restricted. So wherever you created, you can use only in that particular place. You cannot go beyond the class. That is called private. 
So the private variables and private methods we can access only within the class. It is restricted to the class. That's it. When I create variables or methods as a default, so default is not a keyword actually. So we no need to write this keyword. Suppose when I create a method like this, void m1, if you want to make it as a public, you have to write public keyword in front of this method. If you want to make it as a protected, you have to write protected keyword. If you want to make it as a private, you have to write a private keyword. But if you want to make it as a default, you no need to specify any modifier here. Just leave like this. This will be treated as a default access modifier. So you no need to especially write a default keyword here, not needed. Okay. So if you don't specify any other three access modifiers, that will be treated as a default access modifier. Now, if you make a method or variable as a private, we can access them only within the class. Now, if you make the method as variables as the default, we can access them within the package. Within the package, it is higher level of scope. Within the package means what? In all other classes, which are present inside the same package, we can access. Means default is a little higher than private, little higher scope than private. So private access modifier variables and methods, we can access only within the class. Default methods and default variables we can access within the package. Within the package in the sense in all the classes we can access within the package. Protected variables and methods we can access outside of the package also. But through inheritance is possible, not directly. Within the class is possible. Within the package is directly possible. But... If you want to access them outside of the package, outside of the package means what? Another package in some other class. You can still use it. You can access it. But through inheritance, we have to use. So this C2, suppose there is a C1 in which you created your protected variables and protected methods. If you want to use them in the C3, you have to make this C1 as a parent class of C3. Then only we'll get them. Okay. As soon as you make the C1 as a parent for C3, Whatever the variables and methods are belongs to parent, obviously belongs to child also, right? So through inheritance, we can access the variables and methods outside of the package. That is protected. Public means everywhere we can access directly. Within the class, within the package, outside of the package, everywhere, within the project, wherever it is, we can directly access without inheritance. But what is the difference between these two Protected also we can access outside of the package. Public also we can access outside of the package. But the major difference between these two is protected variables and methods we have to inherit. Through inheritance only we can access. Directly we cannot access. But public we can directly access without having any inheritance. So these are the access levels. Class level, package level and project level. Three levels. Private means what? Only within the class. Default is nothing but only within the package. Protected is nothing but what? Outside of the package, only through inheritance. Public is nothing but everywhere in the project. Every class, every package, everywhere we can access. These are four types of access modifiers. Mm -hmm. Now let me demonstrate this with an example. Quickly we will try to understand it first. Very easy concept, just the only thing is you need to concentrate. Okay, now. Okay, let me take uh, this day 17 dot pack one itself and inside this I'm creating one new class. Okay, so inside this I'm creating one simple class called test one. I'm just creating one new class called test one. I'm not creating any main method, nothing. I'm just saying only test one. So in this, just observe, in this, I'm creating one variable, inter x equal to 100. And also I'm creating one method, void m1. And here I'm just trying to print. This is m1 from test one package. Sorry, M1 from test to one. 
or you can say simply this is m1 now i have created one single variable one single method and i make them okay so let it be there so also i will create another class i'll name it as a test 2 okay i'm just naming it as a test 2 class and here i will take main method so test 1 is a normal class which contains one variable and method and test 2 is a actual main class and both are there in the same package or not both are there in the same package day 17 dot pack 1 that is a parent package of both the classes currently both the classes are present in the same package remember that now if you want to access the variable and method normally what you will do you will create an object of test 1 through that object you can access right so let's create object of test 1 t1 t equal to new test 1 i created an object and through that object i can access let me try to print t dot x i'm able to access similarly i will call t dot m1 perfectly right so when i run this code it will access the variable and it will access the method and we are able to get the output perfectly fine now what i will do is i am accessing the variable and method from different class right test 2 is a different class test 1 is a different class here i am able to access now what i will do is i will make the variable as a private also i will make the method as a private both i will make them as a private after saving this observe here here it is giving an error the field test one dot x is not visible same error m1 also the method m1 from the type test one is not visible why it is not visible because we make them as a private what is the behavior of private access modifier Private access modifier, the variables method we can access only within the class. Only within the test one I can access. But we are trying to access outside of the class. Right? That is not possible. So that is a private access modifier. So private access modifier means we can access only within the class. Completely restricted. Access only within the class. So when you make private variable and method, we are able to access only within the class. But when you're trying to access outside of the class, it is giving an error. So that is the first access modifier. Private variables and private methods, we can access only within the class. Now, let us make them as a default. Comment this. And I will create a same variable, same method. This time, I don't specify any access modifier. If I don't specify any access modifier, what is an access modifier will be allocated for this? Default access modifier. So default is little higher than private. So private variables and method we can access only within the class. Whereas default variables and methods we can access within the package. Within the package means what? Test one, test two or belongs to same package or not? Yes. So the variable and method we can directly access here. As soon as we make them as a default, we are able to access in outside of the class also. So when you run this code, this will return the output for us. We are able to access here. Why we are able to access? Because they are the default variables and default methods. We can access in multiple package. Uh, we can access in multiple classes, which are belongs to the same package. Okay. Private is a class level, default is a package level. That means only within the package we can access. Within the package we can access. Okay, let us try to access outside of the package and then we will see whether we are able to access or not. So what I will do is, I will create this test to class in another package. Okay, let me create. So in the day 17 itself, I am going to create dot pack two another package observe very carefully okay now what i will do is i will get the i will copy this test to two dot java 
into pack two. Okay, now observe very carefully. Just see the test one is present in pack one. Test two is present in pack two. Now currently the method and variables are default. Earlier we were able to access because test one, test two are there in the same package. But now test two is separated in pack two, another package. So here it is giving an error. So first error, what it is giving? It is giving this error in the class itself. Why? Because the test two don't know about the test one, where the test one is got created because we completely enter into the different package. And the test two is part of pack two. We are referring test one. So test two class doesn't know about the test one from where it is coming from. So now what we need to do? We have to import the package. Whenever you are referring the classes from external package, you have to import that package first. How to import? You have to write import statement. Import which package under day 17 dot pack one dot test one. You have to import the class from this particular package and then you can use it here. You can create an object. Okay, this issue is got solved. Now, what about the variable and method? When you put the cursor here, it is saying the field test one dot x is not visible and also m1 is not visible. Why they are not visible? Because they are default variables. They are default methods. You can access only within the package. But here we are trying to access from different package. That is the reason we are not able to access. So default access modifier we can access only within the package. Within the package means again all the classes which, which are present in the same package. So earlier test 2 is a part of pack 1. We are able to access here. This test 2 is a pack 1. Here we are able to access. But another test 2 which I have created as part of pack 2. In this we are not able to access. Okay. This is second type of access modifier. Default. Now protected. Protected is little higher than default. So let me comment this. So now observe carefully. So protected is we can access within the class. We can access within the package directly. And we can also access outside of the package also. Outside of the package means in the test in the test to two from pack two also we can access. Let's make them as a protected. See them protected. And also I'll make this method as a protected. So now I have a protected variable and protected method. But still. Here we are not able to access. Even though we make them as a protected, outside of the package, we are not able to access. So when you make variable and method as a protected, we cannot directly access. Only through inheritance we can access. That means direct access means what? Like this, t.x, t.m1. But directly by object, we will able to access. But when you make them as a protected, we cannot directly access, but through inheritance, we can access outside of the package. Means everywhere in the project, you can access. When you make it as a super class, how can we make it? Test two extends test one. This is a concept. So now what happens? Test one from pack one is becomes a parent class of test two. Now, as soon as the test one becomes a parent, whatever is belongs to test one, which is also belongs to test two also, right? Test two also. So now when you create an object of test two, test two, t2 equal to new test two, through this object, we can access everything, right? So I can just print t2 dot x. I'm able to access. Similarly, t2 dot m1, I'm able to access. So the below one is a direct access actually, but when you're making as a protected, we cannot directly access. We, we, we have to make this class as a parent class and extend into child class while creating an object of child class, we can access them. This is indirectly we are accessing. So still we have to know, we have to do import. Why? Because we are still referring the test one class from the different package, right? So whenever you are referring the external class, 
we have to do import. This import is for what? Because we are using external class, which is external class means what? From different package. From test one, uh, from pack one. Okay, import is must. But we are accessing the variables and methods through the child class object, not directly. Directly means what? We can directly create a test one object and through that object, if you, have, if you are able to access, that is the direct access. But here, we are not directly accessing. We are indirectly accessing through child class object. So that is protected. So private means within the class. Default means within the package. Protected means what? Outside of the package also we can access, but only through inheritance it is possible. If you have more than one class, you can import, you have to write multiple imports. Okay, multiple imports. Suppose if you have a multiple classes from the same package, suppose we are referring multiple classes from the same package, you can simply say star. You don't need to write multiple imports. Star representing all the classes which are present in the pack one. And if you want to import a specific class, you can mention the name like this. Okay. If you have a more than one class, you can also still import. More than one class means you can simply say star. And if you have one class to import, you can simply say one class name. Okay. Now just observe here. Private is for access only within the class. Default, we can access within the class and outside of the class means within the package we can access. Protected means outside of the package also we can access but we through inheritance it is possible. In public we can directly access. No inheritance, no object, nothing. So let me show you public. Public. So let's comment this. Public access modifier. So instead of protected I can make it as a public public variable and this is a public method okay so now i make them as a both are public now come to the package here we no need to extend now so once you make them as a public directly we can access like this we no need to extend so what i will do is i will just uh, make another entry this is extension class comment this Now I'm just making another copy here. Okay, just a moment. So this commented from here. Okay, so I have commented this entire class. Now come to the child class. <laughs> So through inheritance, we don't need to do it to remove this part. Even extends also not required. Okay, extension is also not required. So now we can see public class test two and main method. And inside this, we can directly create an object for test one. And from the test one, we can directly access. Because they are the public, we can access everywhere. Directly, we can access just by creating an object and access. So now we got the output. So here we are able to access the variables and method from pack one to the pack two just by creating an object of test one. So this is a direct access everywhere in the project, in whichever package you want to access, you will be able to access. Okay. So these are all four types of access modifiers. So the access levels are different. So private means only within the class. Private. Then default means what? Package. Only within the package. Default. And protected means what? Outside of the package. If you have any other package, here also we can access. That is protected, but only through inheritance it is possible. And directly, if you want to access, we have to make it as a public. Everywhere in the project, you can access if you want to make it as a public. 
import is always necessary whenever you want to refer external class from external package it is not related to accessing the variable or accessing the methods okay before that suppose this is one package package one and this is another package okay this is a package two here you have a class one and here class two now this class i want to use it here for the c1 class i want to create an object here okay so c2 is present in the pack two but here you are referring c1 which is actually coming from different package right so here you have to import import package one dot c1 after importing you will able to access c1 class that is a necessity of import statement whenever you are referring the external class external class means from external package you have to use import then only you will able to access the class once you are able to access the class you can create an object through that object you can access variables and methods okay so this is a concept of access modifier so protected access modifier also we can access outside of the package but only through inheritance it is possible public access modifier we can access everywhere public access modifier we can access everywhere so these are the core access modifier most of them we use only public okay clear everyone about access modifiers public protected default and private okay so practice uh, these concepts wrapper classes packages and how to work with the multiple packages how to use access modifier so just do one round of practice that is enough uh, in the next class uh, we will discuss about uh, some other topic like exception handling and then we have collections all those things okay so we will see in the next class i will stop here for today's session if you have anything we can discuss